Praise the Lord. Oh, wow, I got to get me some water. Sorry about that. I forgot to take a swig before we started, so. There we have it. Got to have the water, man. Jesus is the wonderful water. Hey, take the water of life freely. Everything about Jesus is free. Now, it cost him everything. His price tag was high. And he offers it to us freely. He offers us salvation. He's given us his word. Now, many men shed their blood to get us the Bible. Went to prison, suffered hardships to get us the Bible. And today's Christian don't even want to read it. Today's Christian doesn't even really hardly care. They don't know the Bible. And they're not embarrassed that they don't know it. They're not ashamed that they don't know the scriptures. They're like, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, what was that? And, and dude, I got people telling me Bible stories that aren't even in the Bible. I got to correct them. No, that's not right. That was another dude doing this, but he didn't do that. He did this over here. Oh, yeah. Okay, and it don't even seem to phase them. Okay? Hey, guys. Oh, man, you know what? Sean's put this code up today. Let's do the one he did earlier. Praise God. I'm glad to have you all here with us tonight. Praise the Lord. It's our family. Hey, what about this? Tomorrow's Tuesday. Okay, tonight at midnight is Tuesday here. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday rapture. Sound real good to anybody here? See what today? The, today's the 14th, and that makes it the 20th on the Tishri calendar. 1420, 1521, 1622, and 1723. Victory and death. Some good numbers right there all the way through. I mean, today being the 14, that's Harpazo, right? Harpazo. Praise God. All these days are great. We are in the middle of the great harvest feast, the ingathering, the Feast of Tabernacles. That's where we are, guys. We are there. Heaven is there. And we say, hey, Lord, can you tune us in? Because we want it to be on earth as it is in heaven. That's what the true guys who love the Lord are praying. Lord, may it be so. Whatever your will is, that's what I want. What you're up to is where I want to be. I want to be in step with you, in stride with you. I, I want my heart to be your heart. Lord, I want to be a man after your heart, a woman after your heart. Please show me what that means. See if there be any wicked way in me. If there's anything wrong, get rid of it, Lord. Show me. I don't want to be doing anything wrong. I don't want to be partaking in situations that just don't please you, that are dead, that, that are empty, that are vanity. We talked about that the other night. I don't want no vanity in my life, Lord. I want every minute that I'm awake and sleeping to be accounted for your sake, accounted for heaven, blessing you. You know, the, the American church, the American westernized prosperity American church is all about bless me, bless me, bless me, Lord. And the true heart of the man and woman of God is, Lord, I want to bless you. I want to make you feel welcome and valued and appreciated with a wonderful sense of belonging in my home, in my heart, at my workplace, in my car. I don't want to have any place that you're not, and I want you to be pleased everywhere I am. Lord, please may that be true. Make it true. How, how, how on earth are you a friend of God? How do you know that you're being the proper friend? Okay? We can't even deal with human level friendships and issues properly sometimes. How do you know you're the friend of God? Because he declares it. He imputes his righteousness into you and he makes you righteous enough to be a righteous friend. Now, just go be a righteous friend. Just walk with the Lord. You'll make it so. He's made it perfected. He has perfected you in his righteousness. Just be a friend of his, will you? Amen. Hey, let's see this code here, Sean did, because it's talking about this. This is from Sean. This is from his heart before he shares us God's word from God's heart. And see, when you're a friend of the Lord, your heart is God's heart. You're just sharing what you've been marinating in, 
in the presence of the Lord, meditating on Him, loving Him, being part of all that. All right, Vondo has put this up, this code that we're about to do. It's the one, if you're reading along, if you're studying along, it's the one that says, He discerned, He knew the sufficiency of my days. Okay, that's the one we'll be doing. We're going to look at Sean's heart, his commentary. Guys, be praying for that guy. Don't you understand that the devil's after him? He had quite the ordeal today. It was obvious the devil's trying to cut him short. Okay? Please pray for our friend that he'll accomplish everything God's called him to do. Praise God, God took care of the situation. The situation's fine now. But it is obvious that the devil is after this guy and wants him dead. Okay? And the devil's going to be able to kill him here in about three and a half years, but not before then. And we need to pray for him until then. And even then, and he's going to, golly, the experience he's going to have. All right. Pray for our brother. Here's from Sean's heart to us. He says, God doesn't force us to study his word. Amen. He doesn't come down there and put you in shackles and chains like the devil does. Puts a boot on your head and says, now you're going to be my boy and you're going to do it like this. Praise God. He doesn't force us to study his word or be diligent to present ourselves before him. This is the labor that we do out of our love for him. Hallelujah. We love him because he first loved us. I really, I really, my prayer is this, that you understand the vastness of his love for you to the point where it humbles you greatly and you don't want anything else but his love. And you don't want anything else but to please him and love him back. And he said, you love me when you love my word, when you hold my word in highest regard, and my word is your everything, your life. It's your eternal life. It's your present life. Are you there yet? I pray you're there. If you're not there, you're in trouble. <laughs> These fools... There's, we'll, we'll get to that in the next code. God doesn't force us to study his word or be diligent to present ourselves before him. This is the labor that we do out of love for him. Our whole purpose for being here is to worship God. Have you figured that out yet? Not to cheer on your favorite sports team. Not to have your great collection of whatever it is you're collecting, all your collectibles. <sighs> Guys, if fire can burn it, you shouldn't be collecting it. Okay, if rust can corrode it, you shouldn't be collecting it. If it's only of this world and temporary, you shouldn't be collecting it. You shouldn't have any part in it. You should be focusing on only the eternal, beginning with the eternal wise God, being his friend. Amen? Our whole purpose for being here is to worship God, have fellowship with him, share the gospel with the lost, and preach his word correctly. But sadly, for many believers, this isn't the case. And as a result, there will be much shame at the judgment seat of Christ. And guys, I hope nobody listening to me right now that this will be true of you. I don't want any of you to be ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ. I don't want me ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ. We have some clues there. when Jesus is talking about some brought forth 30, some 60, and some 100-fold. Be a 100-folder, will you? 100% of you for 100% of God. Serve Him. Serve Him. Serve Him. Okay? Follow the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love Him. It's going to be worth it. It's all by faith. You cannot please Him without faith, and faith is God said what will happen? God said, what is true? God said, concerning the judgment seat of Christ, some things, a whole bunch of things. And now he's not going to, you know, force us to do any of it. But out of love for him, we're like, Lord, I want to do it all. Please, please let me do it all. Let me please you. I want to please you. Now, we're not going to do all of Christianity. What we're going to do is do our part. I'm just a part of the body of Christ. Okay. And I say, Lord, Will you please let me finish this life in the rapture exactly the way you designed me to do it? Nothing short. Nothing short, nothing weird, nothing out there. I just, Lord, please, please, let me please you in all that I do. I want to please you. I want to have 
crowns to throw at your feet when I get to heaven. Please, Lord. The Holy Spirit will guide you in this truth. The Holy Spirit will have you doing the proper things, okay? Our whole existence here is for the love of the Lord Jesus Christ 100% of the time. Okay, we're looking at the Bible code that Sean did seven hours ago. The verse, verses right now we're looking at is Romans 12, 1 and 2. Oh, I beg you, brothers. I beg you, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you will present your bodies a living sacrifice. 16, 16, 16. Every time we see 16, it's sacrifice. It's his sacrifice, and he died in his sacrifice, a burnt offering. But he's called you and I to be living sacrifices. We don't have to die. We just got to live. We die to ourselves and live alive unto Jesus, okay? Oh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you'll present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. It's just your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Do you know, Christians... And I'm going to go out there and say the massive majority of the Christians that you do know are worldly Christians. Soccer mom, soccer dad, football, baseball, cheer. Got my little girl, she, my, my little baby girl, she's seven. We got her just as naked as she could be. So when we go to cheer camp and cheer class, that all the pedophiles there can just really enjoy her. Are you guys that stupid? Cheerleading the same way. Take your little girls and train them to be pedophilia bait. This is what it's all about. Why can't they put clothes on a cheerleader? Oh, because they just won't be effective. Get out of the world, folks, and get into the heart and mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, all the way through the Bible, speaks of modesty, modest apparel, modesty, modesty, modesty. And this church age hates modesty. I want all the boobs that I got showing that I can show while I'm at church. I want to have a little mini skirt I can hike clean up to my panties, okay? These guys want to be, be all macho and stuff, and we want to be just as worldly as everybody else around us. And the massive majority of Christians that you know are worldly and not godly. I pray that you're godly. I, pr I pray that they're godly. I pray for them all the time. Lord, they are so blind. They don't know what's about to happen when they face you, when they confront you face to face at the judgment seat of Christ. They just don't know. Lord, please wake them up. I pray that for you. Will you please wake up? Oh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you'll present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy that means absolutely separated unto God. There's no portions that are still attached to the world. You are holy, W-H, holy, holy, H-O-L-Y, unto the Lord. Are you holy, holy, unto the Lord? Absolute holy, set apart for God's purposes and Him alone, and there's nothing of this world or you left. It's just all for the Lord. You're a living sacrifice. You have sacrificed your life here, your goals, your future, your things, you've sacrificed it all for the Lord. Whatever you want, Lord, that's what I want, Jesus. I want to do what you want me to do, Jesus. Holy, acceptable unto the Lord. Are you sure that everything you're doing is acceptable to God? That he absolutely has his wonderful joy approval on there. And he's so, so, so excited because You've chosen him and you've chosen his word and you've chosen your lifestyle to be his lifestyle in you. His calling. Is that you? Are you acceptable? Are you holy? And are you acceptable unto God? Because all of this we've just discussed is your reasonable service. It's reasonable. If you were to stop and reason it out, shouldn't you give him your all? He gave you his. He left heaven to come to this filthy place and he's allowing you through that sacrifice for you to be a living sacrifice and go from this filthy place to where he is. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we don't know whither thou goest and how do we know the way? And Jesus looked him in the eyeball and said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. And no man comes to the Father except through me. Now, most of Christianity says, okay, so I can't get to the Father except through Jesus. I can't get to heaven except through Jesus. I can't pray to the Father except through Jesus. I'm coming to Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I need you. I love you. I don't want to go to hell. 
but will you please stay out of my life while I'm still living my life? And I don't want nothing to do with you till it's time for me to die. And I surely don't want to die soon because, man, I got a lot of bucket lists I need to accomplish. Okay? Does any of that sound holy and acceptable unto God? It sure sounds retarded and foolish to me. Sinful, satanic, selfish, self-absorbed, non-thinking. Hmm. Let's keep on reading. We're in Romans 12, 1 and 2. It's just your reasonable service to live holy and be acceptable unto God. Be not conformed to this world in any way, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The Word of God, 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 the Word of God. There's no other way to renew your mind. It's called the washing of regeneration. Your mind will be regenerated. Your past will be regenerated. Everything, all the negative stuff, all the positive, everything will be regenerated with a God focus, with the Word. The Word of God. The Word of God. In big chunks. Shut your TV off. Throw it out in the woods. How many times does this preacher have to say that for you to understand that it's true? It's preaching from heaven. You're going to get rid of the portal from hell if you'll get rid of your television set. And it's programming. Because your mind is not being renewed in the things of God while you're being programmed by Satan. Okay? Quit being programmed by Satan. Throw your TV out. And open up the Word of God and read 10 to 20 to 30 chapters every day. The washing of regeneration. Your mind, your thoughts, your heart, your spirit, everything will be regenerated in the Word of God. Let's get back to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be the TV, the sports, the entertainment, your favorite comedy shows. Saturday Night Live. Are you kidding me? Just before Sunday church? What a filthy, wicked show and always has been. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove. How do you prove it? Through the scriptures. You'll be able to prove what's good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Because you've read the scriptures and you know what God approves. The church today doesn't know anything about God and what he approves and what he disapproves of. They think he's really cool with their fornication. The church members. The church members think they are cool with them watching porn. I had a guy tell me that at work. Truck driver. Yeah, I, I used to watch porn um, at least four times a month. Now I'm only down to one time a month. God's really pleased with me in that. That was the gist of his conversation. God hates porn. He told us that in scriptures. He told us to stay far away from it. He hates fornication. He hates adultery. What is adultery? Lusting after somebody in your own mind? Ooh, she's a hottie. He's a hottie. I'd like to take her down to the woods. Fornication, adultery. God abhors it because he loves a faithful relationship between a man and a woman in a holy vow, in holy matrimony. What does holy mean? He's included. That's what makes something holy is God. He's the thrice holy God. Holy, holy, holy. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. God's God called us not only to have that in our matrimony, but in every aspect of our thinking, breathing, sleeping life. It's just our reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Next verses. This is today's Bible code from seven hours ago. 2 Peter 3, 14. Wherefore, because of this, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. That means... Don't be living in a, in a middle of a mud puddle of sin when Jesus raptures you. Okay, Th that will kind of get your garment spotty. A mud puddle of sin? Don't do that, guys. Live holy, live righteously. Keep yourselves from idols. Keep yourselves from wickedness. Your television's an idol. Your Christmas tree is an idol. Will you please understand that? And your stubbornness against the preacher in these two subjects is idleness. Stubbornness is as idolatry. 
And rebellion is witchcraft. The church is loaded with idolatrous witches. Idolatrous warlocks. Because of their own stubborn pride and willfulness. I will. I oppose God. I hate that preacher. It's not the preacher. It's the pr Bible verses you hate. He just happens to be God's spokesman at the time. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved, when you guys see wherefore and therefore, read the previous verses. Okay? There, there's some good ones right there in 15, 58, 1 Corinthians. Start with verse 1. Because that's where he tells us 1, 2, 3, and 4, what the gospel is. And then he goes from there and he works it all the way down to this very last verse. And because of all the stuff he said previously... Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast in these things. Don't be wavering. Be steadfast. Unmovable. You be anchored in Jesus Christ. Ain't nothing going to shake you and quake you. Because the Bible is so real in your heart and your faith is so active. Because you're a friend of God. You're, you're actively walking with him. That's what all this means. Most Christians visit God when they have an incredible need. Lord, I've got this. I've got this opportunity to buy this house on the beach. Will you please just, just come through? I'll do whatever you want me to do if you'll just, just let me get this loan. I'll go in debt for you, Lord, if you'll just let answer this prayer. I've got to have this beach house. If you've, heard, you've heard us talking about the tsunami bombs, right? You won't have a beach house long. Why don't we pray that we may not consume things on our own lust? Why don't we pray the will of God? Why don't we downsize and give to the kingdom of heaven? The wicked world is upsizing in everything. Need a new this, a new that, a larger this. Not in the kingdom of heaven. We downsize. We go as light as we can so we may help others. That's... The Christian way, it's always been that way since, you know, Jesus rose from the dead. Kind of told us how things were. 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Therefore, because of the first 57 verses, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. What he's called you to do. Not the work of the world, not your 10 points on your page that you got to accomplish before life ends. His work. For as much as you know that your labor will not be in vain in the Lord. Guys, how many of you, honestly, live every moment of your day knowing you're about to go to the judgment seat of Christ and see Jesus in the face? And he's going to judge you for everything that you've done, whether it be good or worthless. And you know that that's at the top of your list. You can't stop thinking about that. Something is wrong if that's not you. Something is wrong with your Christianity. Your maturity level is way down in the dumps. But you know what's so cool about this whole time? When the Holy Spirit reveals something to you, you can immediately get on board. You can immediately repent. That means change your thinking to match this, these Bible verses we just read. Immediately. And God will count it as though you've done it all your Christian life. With your heart, with godly sorrow, godly sorrow will lead you to repentance. If this has not been you, you need to be genuinely sorrowful over it. Lord, I have been a terrible friend. I've been no good. I've not walked with you. I don't read your word. Your word is not my mindset. I don't read 20 to chapters a day, 10 to 20 chapters a day. I watch way too much TV. And you start confessing the facts about your sorry self. I'm talking the Christian version of you, the saved one. And you become a 100-folder for the Lord Jesus Christ, and he'll count it as though you were. If you'll confess it today, you hear the preaching, you're not going to harden your heart. You're not going to get stiff-necked. You're not going to get all stubborn. Idolatry, you're going to worship yourself. Stubbornness is self-worship. Idolatry. You're not going to get all rebellious. That preacher telling me to throw out my TV, I'm turning the channel. Go ahead. Or you can repent and say, you know what, Lord Jesus, you're right. I, I want to just be a good friend right back to you, 100%. It's my reasonable service. I don't want to be conformed to this world. I want to be transformed by the renewing of mind through the Scripture that I may be able to prove what is right and wrong in this world, that I'll have discernment. Your Word does that. 
Your presence does that to me. I want to be this guy, this gal. Let's look at what God says. The translation code by Sean Mitchell. Translation. Now, this is talking about Sean. Sean, the Bible code guy. Because the Bible code is the Bible. All these Bible code tables will renew our minds and change us and draw us closer in friendship with the Lord. And the more of these Bible codes you know, you'll be closer to God than you've ever been. Promise, because he gives us specifics here that we had never known before. And now he's revealed them to us who have a desire to see them. I have some friends who saw every one of them and now they have rebelled against them. They've rebelled against the Bible codes. And I got one loud mouth. He's going to groups telling everybody, oh, how bad, how bad. It now, he won't come out and say, oh, the Bible codes are bad. But what he says is, uh, you can't know the day or the hour of the rapture. He sounds almost like T.W. Tram. And the rest of those people who keep repeating that over and over. That passage, guys, you don't know the day or the hour? When Jesus said that, he was referring to the millennium, not the rapture. And if you could just quickly learn that and quit being stubborn. I told an IT guy that. See, IT guys are really smart. He's the head IT guy for the largest church in my town. I told him he was dead wrong. He goes, I'm going with scripture on this by. He wasn't going with scripture on it. He's going with the interpretation of his retarded idiot pastor concerning that Bible passage and not the context in which Jesus was talking. He just answered a question. When will the end of all these things be? He didn't say, when will the beginning of all these things be? When will the end of all these things be? The end of the tribulation. And Jesus said, I'm not telling you. He didn't say the rapture. Why? Because we got Apostle Paul coming along saying, we'll know when the rapture is. We're, we're not children of the night. Jesus is coming like a thief to those who aren't watching. But we are not of the night. We are children of the day. We'll know when he's coming. So we've always believed that. And all of a sudden, we start getting Bible codes saying, I'm coming at Shavuot. I'll rapture you pre-trib on Pentecost. Okay, so we learned all the way that Pentecost includes tabernacles, praise God. And so there's not much more time for Pentecost to exist this year. It's going to happen at the Feast of Tabernacles. We only have three of those days left. Aren't you excited? Aren't you looking up? Aren't you ready to look Jesus in the face having been a full-blown Christian and not a full-blown worldly idiot? Wouldn't that be awesome? That'd be awesome. And I encourage you to be that person and not that idiot. Okay? You be that one he saved and you give him all of you like he gave you all of himself. All right. Translation by Sean Mitchell. He discerned, he knew the sufficiency of my days. God's awesome. Sean understood the days of the Lord. He understood the rapture. He understood the tribulation. He understood the first three and a half years. He understood his role in it. Remember, God's very, very particular about his days. The first half of the tribulation will be 1,260 days. And this... Sean here knows when those days are. He's going to be living in them. Wouldn't you like to listen to a guy who God has given him the discernment, the ability, the foresight to see these things and just go ahead and shut your mouth and listen to him talk for a second? Especially when it's coming through in the translation from God. Sean went in there and discovered what God had already, blew the dust off and said, wow, Lord, that's awesome. I believe it. The Bible code, God says that the Bible code book of Sean Mitchell is 100% accurate. Word for word, line on line, precept for precept, here a little and there a little, yod and tittle, perfect, 100%. I'm going to believe God and not these idiots who poo-poo it. These people that are going on all these sites saying, you can't know the day or the hour. People have lost their money because they thought the rapture was going to happen 20 days ago. They gave it all away. Are you kidding me? Name, give me some names of people who did that, will you? You liars, liars, you scoffers, you slanderers. You don't want to face Jesus being that idiot. 
Sean Mitchell discerned he knew the sufficiency of God's days, Jehovah's days. Please see and document this. So he did. He saw it, what God had there, and let us in on it. Are you grateful for that or what? Less than 1% of all Christianity believes in the Bible codes. Believes the Bible codes and a less than that percentage has found Sean the real codes. Aren't you thankful to be one of those? Are you going to let them change you or just you just think they're kind of novel? You ought to go back to his codes from six years ago, five years ago, and see all the people who were liking and blessing and commenting, and you ain't seen a like from them in about, you know, three years, two years, something. You don't want to be that kind of a flaky, unsteadfast, movable, blowing in the wind retard. It's either the Bible or it ain't, and you better get on board, buddy, and you better give Jesus 100 of this thing. You're about to see him, and you will wish you had. I will wish that I had given him all 100% of me, and you'll wish that you gave him all 100% of you, and we can. It's a decision away. Lord, you got all of me right now. Aren't you thankful that God, re he'll buy back all your wasted years when you give him all of you now? And he truly knows when a man and a woman gives him 100% of their heart and their mind and their body and their soul and everything in sacrifice, a living sacrifice. He knows that moment. And he considers you that moment. He considers you fully, full-blown living sacrifice at that moment. Aren't you thankful for our God? Will you, will you let this moment be that moment and get away from all the world and quit conforming yourself to their thinking and quit thinking about Trump's going to save the day? All you people believing in Trump, you believe in the devil. You believe his script and you hate God's. You are conformed to the world and you have not been transformed in your mind by God's truth. You hate his truth. I'm encouraging you not to do that. I'm encouraging you to repent. Translation, he discerned, he knew the sufficiency of my days. Please see and document this. Sean Mitchell is diligent. Boy, he's been diligent. He's been incredibly diligent. Day and night, wearisome, tired, wore out, hurting, in physical pain. S just sleepy, tired. He confirmed the true Bible code. And the spelling is validation. All you got to do is look at it and you'll know that that's been confirmed in God's word. God says so. And you'll see it, how it is so beautifully harmonized with the plain text, just with greater depth and meaning, more detail. 2 Timothy 2.15, you need to study to present yourself perfectly before God. This is a command from God, guys. Paul was talking to Timothy, a preacher boy. We're all preacher boys, okay? We're not all pastors of churches, but you are the pastor of your family. You, you shepherd your little kids around, don't you? you? You direct their steps, don't you? Your grandkids? You are a shepherd of sorts. So listen up, shepherd. Listen up, preacher, proclaimer of truth. Listen up. You need to study. That means you got to shut your TV off. I mean, you got to quit reading your stupid books that have nothing to do with God. Study to show yourself. Well, I like the way this is worded. Study to present yourself perfectly before God, a laborer who is not ashamed, one who correctly preaches the word of truth. You're all proclaimers. Y'all got a Facebook page. You're proclaiming something all the time. Why don't you proclaim Jesus and not a recipe? All these people taking pictures of their food and presenting recipes are only going to make those in starvation, those in the famine, just more miserable. Do you not see that by faith? Is your faith that short-sighted? Why don't you give them something they can bite onto, the truth of scriptures, eternity. Don't give up on the Lord. Don't give in to the devil. Barack Obama is the Antichrist. Don't follow him. All these Bible code truths, that's what you need on your platforms. God, 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 his word, his splendid truth. And then, of course, Sean tells us how to be, you to know how to be saved. Do you know you're going to heaven? You must, first of all, know the bad news is that we're all sinners and you're not going to heaven. You are not. There's no way. You can't be good enough to go to heaven. There is no way you'll ever make it to heaven. 
That's the bad news. But the good news is uh, Jesus came here to make a way. And he died in your place. And he took on your sin and your imperfections. And if you'll believe that, you can take on his righteousness. It's a swap. Your sin for his righteousness. Will you do it? Will you believe today? Will you let him? He's already died for your sin. Will you believe that? Will you unlock that truth in your own life? Yes, I believe you did that for me, Lord Jesus. And when you believe that, he infuses his righteousness in you, his perfection, and that pleases the Father. The, the perfection of Jesus Christ pleases the Father. And when your life has been perfected by the blood of Jesus, the Father's pleased. And you no, no longer have to seek to pleasure him. Oh, Lord God, please, please accept me. Make me accept. No more. He's accepted the righteousness of Jesus Christ in you because you believed in the death, burial, and resurrection. Now, now, that's some good news, folks. All right. Hey, let's look at that other code that he just did, man. He just finished it an hour ago. Okay. You guys know that God hates false witnesses. I, I don't mean he dislikes them and he wishes they would be quiet. He hates them. He cannot stand them and he will throw them in hell and fry them forever. And while they're screaming, he's going to love it. Okay? This is our God. I, I hope you understand who our God is. He's holy. He's righteous. He only does the right thing. God hates false, false witnesses who speak lies and sow discord among the brethren. Hmm. God hates it. Those that sow discord among the brethren, trying to divide the unity that God has put together. Y'all know that we were divided until we met at the cross and then Jesus, the Holy Spirit, unifies us. Remember that whole Acts 2 thing where they were all together in one accord, in one unity? That's the heart of God. The devil wants to come and divide. He's a divisor. He will divide, divide and conquer. That's his goal. And the Lord is unified. And these people go around just potty mouthing the proper preachers. We are here. We are here to stand up and point to the false preachers and tell them they're all wrong. Why? Because I've rightly divided the word of truth and I can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Because I know the Bible and I know the author. He's my friend. Okay, that's where we all should be. Make that your target. Make that your goal transforming your mind, not conforming to the world. So God hates false witnesses who speak lies and sow discord among the brethren. Many of these idiots are tares sown by Satan who's crept in unawares. Now, we read about that in Jude last night, okay? Satan has planted these idiots in our churches, and they talk our lingo and stuff, and it doesn't take long before you can figure them out if you're discerning. If you're real close to the Lord, you can discern them quickly. Okay, I encourage you to get rid of the world. If you have a lot of the world in you still, and, and you love... No, no, we're not talking about gross sin. I'm talking about you loving your hockey team so much that you're feverish. You have a room dedicated to it, and that's not true of Jesus. You filled your mind with things of this world. If you have your mind and your heart filled with things of this world, you will have terrible discerning. Terrible. Won't even you you will oppose God in your discernment. Is that what you want? Or do you want to please the Lord now on this side? You're gonna to have to do that. You have to get rid of the world. Be not conformed to this world. Get it all out of you and be totally transformed by the renewing of your mind through the scriptures. These guys have crept into the church to, uh, unaware, to create disharmony among the wheat. I've seen it. I've seen it in our little Bible study. My little Bible study, guys, we ain't never had over 30 people in it because truth runs them off. Their demons get stirred up and they want to stir everybody up and they want to divide. They want to create dissension. They, they get on the phone with each other. They get on messenger with each other and they have a little group chat and they just start brrr, negative, 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 negative until they have tried to just destroy everything in sight. And meanwhile, the preacher doesn't even know none of that's going on. And it happens all the time, especially when you got truth preaching, preaching. 
they want to create disharmony among the wheat. God is preparing. He's going to rip them out by the roots, man, and cast them straight into the fire. The tares, remember the tares? They're burned, thrown into the fire. All right. So this idiot named Jonathan Matthew Wright, he was a Bible code guy. I don't know how long he's been around, man. 12 years, 11 years, something like that. Well, I knew the Bible codes were real. I read Drazen back in the 90s. I believed it. I knew it. I knew the power of God. I know that his coded word is powerful. Okay. Well, this guy comes along and he's preaching. He's, he's a, uh, he was once a church of God, a prophecy guy. And then he become a Baptist, saved by grace through faith, Jesus Christ. And so he's doing these Bible codes. Well, me not being a Bible code guy, I didn't know a fake one from a real one because I really hadn't seen a real one just yet. I've seen Glazerson. I saw a couple of these other guys doing them who are not even full-blown walkers with the Lord Jesus Christ. And they were, they were doing them, and I, I didn't know a bad code from a good code. And this guy got here, and, I, and we invited him. He said, man, I want to make a video teaching people how to do this. Your little congregation would be perfect because I'm so scared to death. I'm nervous. That would be a great place for us to do this. And I had a great video guy Darren Snow, who was excellent with editing and da-da-da-da, and it was perfect. So he came, he came aboard, man, and so he did his thing, and it was great, and he was, you know, walking with the Lord. I didn't know he had chicks on the side and was doing drugs, okay? I didn't know that at the time, but it didn't take long. The second time he was here, I knew it. I had to take him to the hospital. His kidneys were failing. He was peeing black as coffee, when they saw him at the hospital, they're like, oh, dude. And they put three bags on him right away. And, he's, and then I had different ladies talking to me about his deal with them. Texas and Tennessee. He told me lies, lies, sweet little lies. We're going to be together forever. We're going to minister. I'm so ashamed of what I did with him. Those kinds of conversations. That's who this guy is. And he's still online as the code searcher. He is a devil from hell. And don't you have nothing to do with him? We'll keep reading and you'll find out what that means. Jonathan Matthew Wright is a false prophet. He, he does Bible codes, but not real Bible codes. This guy is, when you see, I, I don't recommend you see him, but his codes are stretched out so far. They're not even real codes. You'll see what Sean does in a compact area. That's a real code. His tables are square, about this big, and gets a lot in there. This guy stretches them out, and he's got, he's got a little cluster over here, and then a cluster way out of, over here. You can't even see it on the screen, hardly. And they don't even go together. These codes don't even match and go together. And he presents false codes all the time because they're not real codes because he's not really saved. He doesn't have the Holy Spirit of God in him. He hates Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and he's doing Bible codes. There's many cults doing Bible codes, guys. Okay, but when you look at them, they're, you could just see having been around Sean, the real codes, and then looking at their junk, wickedness, stupid, uh, elementary. Okay, so this J Jonathan Matthew Wright is a false prophet who denies God's word and his code. He doesn't believe in the truth of salvation by grace through faith alone. You got to say G God's name right. Yahuwah. And Jesus Yahushua, Yahushua, Yahushua. Oh, you got to say the magic word. And then he denies, he hates the name Jesus. You guys know that it was God that gave us 70 different languages at the Tower of Babel. And God loves to hear his name in all 70 of those languages. Because he's listening to the heart there's a whole bunch of Americans who scream Jesus Christ, but they're cussing when they say it. I got a guy in my office that does it every day. Jesus Christ, Jesus, Joseph, and Mary. And he's not calling on the Lord. It's the heart that God is listening to, and he loves to hear it in all 70 plus languages now. And this guy, I hate Jesus. Jesus didn't even exist. And this guy is a devil, a tear from hell planted by his father, Satan. Pretending to be godly, using the Bible. He's a tear, man. He's a wolf. He loves money. He's all about the money, baby. He doesn't believe in the truth of salvation by grace through faith alone. That's a bad start, folks. 
Therefore, the wrath of God abides on him. Jesus' name is at the start of Proverbs 26. You got to love that, okay? 26 is God. Jehovah. Proverbs is 20, okay? Uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot to this address of this verse. It's awesome. Uh, so we got Jesus' name is at the start of Proverbs 26, 5, which ends at Wright's name. God just answered this fool. According to this passage, this verse, the plain text, and the coded text. John 3, 36 says, He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. This guy thinks you got to work it out. you got to follow the uh, law, the Torah. you got to keep Sabbath, all this jazz. Okay, When the Bible tells us, He that has the Son has life. And we're told that His name's Jesus in our English Bible. God's cool that God loves the English version just like he loves the Jewish version. Do you guys know that the English version gets more acceptance than the Jewish version does? We love Jesus in America. We love Jesus. We American, we English speaking folks love Jesus. Not too many of the Jews love Yeshua. Not too many of the Hebrew roots folks love the real Yeshua. Okay, it's more than just saying a name and how you say it. It's the heart of the matter and having the son. He that has the son has life. He that has not the son has not life, but the wrath of God abides on him. And that's what John 3, 36 says. He that believeth on the son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the son shall not see life. What he'll see is the wrath of God abiding on him. Okay, so this Jonathan Matthew Wright idiot, He's a tear. He's a liar. He's a false prophet. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's a son of Satan, and he's going to burn in hell. We have Bible codes that say that. Remember the beginning of this thing? God's going to take tear up the tares and throw them in the pit. This Jonathan Matthew Wright will go to hell. And the way we see it, the way I see it, is... Uh, you know, when America's attacked and God saves us in the rapture, this guy hates the pre-trib rapture. He hates the idea of pre-trib rapture. When he came to my group, he loved Jesus, the name. He loved the pre-trib rapture. He loved all this stuff because he was playing a role. Now his heart's been revealed 10 years later. His love for drugs and women. Proverbs 6, 16 and 19 these six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven, are an abomination unto him. And then it begins with them, and, and uh, here we've got the last two. A false witness that speaks lies, that's this guy, Jonathan Matthew, writes a liar, a false witness. He claims to be a good witness. And Oh, look, there's my name, Jonathan. Oh, that's me. Uh, we are convinced that God is probably talking about a different Jonathan there and not him at all when he says that. Uh, right says he will find your name, but the size of the table depends on how much money you pay. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yes, I'll, I'll do your own personal code table with your name on it, and it will have your. You tell me some of the things about you, but you gotta, you know, pay me, pay me money because you know my time is money. Yeah, that's exactly right, Lindy. Uh, what else did you write? Code searchers are like drop spaghetti. Yeah, yeah, his his tables are terrible. It's just a mess. And when you see Sean's, they're clear and clean. That's exactly right. All right. So God hates a false witness that speaks lies, and he hates people who sow discord among the brethren, slanderers, people who cut down the codes, liars and slanderers. God hates. Hates. You just read it. Proverbs 6, 16 and 19. He's got verse 16 and 19 are the verses he's utilizing here. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. And then the last two are a false witness, he that speaks lies, and he that sows discord, slanders, liars and slanderers. A slanderer is somebody who wants to bring you down and ruin your character and make your character different than what God sees it to be. Because God looks at the heart and these guys are, oh, this guy did that and she said this and he said that and... They're slandering. They are, they are. And guys, slander to God is murder. Slander equals murderer. It's character assassination. You are killing the truth in that person who God sees them to be. 
And so that's what all these people do who, who make false codes and who lie about the true codes, who slander the true codes. That's what we're getting at here. Let's look at the code by Sean Mitchell. We're looking at the one he did an hour ago. It starts with, he doesn't consider the heart of the individual with the gift. Jonathan Matthew Wright thinks only of himself. He doesn't even, uh, he has tried to confront Sean and this guy is so wrong in the confrontation. We just roll our eyes, get a hold of, tell Sean to get a hold of me, Johnny boy. I ain't telling Sean crap, dude. You know, t tell us you false prophets don't, you know, govern us and tell us what to do. We've already told you you're doing it wrong. We already told you you're sinning against the living God. We already told you you're a tear. Uh, he doesn't consider the heart of the individual with the gift. That'd be Sean. This guy denies the code. He presents codes, but he denies God. And they're God's codes. God is the one who names them, the Bible codes. He says, they are my word in my dialect. And this guy is throwing out codes and Glazer sin and the rest of them. And none of them believe in Jesus. None of them know God personally. They're surely not led of the Holy Spirit of God. They're led by demons, just like, you know, a Ouija board. The devil's got them finding all kinds of crazy stuff in there that ain't there. Illegitimate codes. They're not even codes of God. He denies the code. Right. That's Jonathan Matthew Wright. To sin against him. To rebel against the Most High, Jesus, by the mockery of his truth. He's making these codes saying, the Lord did this, the Lord told me, and Yahushua, and this and that, and it's all lies. And he doesn't even consider the heart of God, the one who gives the codes, to the man of God who discovers the codes. Doesn't even consider God in this whole process. He considers himself in making money. You pay me, I'll find a code about you. That's not how it's done, folks. The Creator said, enmity. This guy's his enemy. The creator said, I hate Jonathan Matthew Wright. I hate him. He's a tear. God hates tears, guys. These six things that the Lord hate, a lying tongue, that's Jonathan Matthew Wright. God hates the guy. You will be terrified of the testimony. Remember at the judgment right there at the end of the 7,000 years, 1,007 years from now, the great white throne judgment and the books were open. Jonathan Matthew Wright will be standing there before God. And God will look over and say, hey, Sean, can you bring me your book right quick? Sean will walk over there and hand it to the Lord. And this guy is going to be terrified of the entire scene. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. His codes were real. Yeah, we told you that way back. When the preacher speaks truth, guys, y'all better listen. And you better quit slandering. And you better become holy before a holy God because God really has his real men out there preaching the real truth. And you better locate these guys. You better know who they are. And you better listen and change. That's God's M.O. all the way through the Bible. He has his true men out there among the liars. The liars are many. The true are few. And you better be able to recognize them right away. I encourage you in that. Read the word, get rid of this world, and do not conform to this world. But be transformed, transformed by the plain text and the Bible code. So this guy right here is going to be terrified of Sean's codes when God whips him out. And the books were open. Guys, this Bible code book is going to be of the books that are, will be opened. Because God has everybody's story in the code. Whether you're going to heaven or hell, your story is there. And Jonathan Matthew writes, going to hell, he's a liar. He, he will have a hard heart. He loves himself too much. to. If he were to hear this message that I'm preaching right now, he would deny it. He would scoff. He, would, he wouldn't even be tenderhearted toward the things of God because that's what this says here at the beginning. He doesn't consider the heart of the individual with the gift. He doesn't have the gift. And he surely won't consider the heart of somebody who has the gift. One Sean Mitchell. Given a gift from God himself, this word has always been forever settled in heaven. And he gave it to Sean and said, Sean, we're going to put your name on here. You're my guy. You're going to be my witness during the three and a half years. 
you're, you're him. So let's get busy. And know right up front, you're going to hurt. You're going to be miserable. You're going to be tired. You're going to be in pain. You're going to go through trial after trial after trial after trial. And the devil himself is personally going to be up in your face like he was this afternoon, guys. I'm telling you. Pray for our dear brother. Let's go through that translation again. John, Jonathan Matthew Wright doesn't consider the heart of the individual with the gift. He denies the code, though he writes codes. Jonathan Matthew Wright, to, to sin against him, to rebel against the Most High Jesus, Yeshua, by the mockery of his truth, he's a slanderer and a liar. The Creator said, enmity, this guy's my enemy. And Jonathan Matthew Wright, you will be terrified of the testimony that is presented in this book, the true book of codes against you. When you're thrown into the eternal lake of fire, thus saith the Lord. Proverbs 16, 14, and 15, forwardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord, therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. So mm. Like a whole bunch of wicked folks who missed the rapture immediately upon our being pulled away from rage, from destruction, from terror, from the enemy, from God's wrath. These guys are going to be killed immediately, wiped out. Many of them in their beds. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly there shall be, uh, he shall be broken and there will be no remedy for him, no help. Oh God, save me. All the way through the prophets. We see that once God's wrath begins and people start saying, God, save me, God, save me. He says, I will not hear you. I, I will not be listening for, to any of that because I've come to kill you and I'll kill you. Proverbs 26, 5. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. You tell me this, Sean. You tell me this. You tell me that. You don't answer him. You answer him according to his folly. You fool. And then we have that wonderful plan of salvation again. The bad news, you're a sinner. The good news, Jesus forgives sinners. Amen. He washes them clean. Guys, I love you dearly. Know the Bible. Know God. Know the author. Know his plain text. Read it over and over and over and over and over until your discernment is like God's own discernment. And you can decipher good and bad. You got to get the world out of you. Their philosophies, their ways, they've been shoving them in you since you were in your mama's womb while she was watching TV. While she was listening to the talk shows. While your dad was listening to those late night talk shows while you were traveling. The devil was speaking then. You got to get all that out of you and be reprogrammed. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How does rapture sound, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday? Any, anybody good with that? I'm great with that. I really like that 17 slash 23 day. That one looks pretty neat. But I'll take tonight too. Amen. Guys, I love you with all my heart. Let's finish this race together. Let's walk across that line together. Let's help each other along. Let's encourage each other along. Okay? Walk holy. Pray for Sean. We're going to pray for him right now. Lord Jesus, we thank you for our dear brother. We thank you for giving him the courage and the stamina to stand. Even when the winds have blown, the tornadoes have come, and the devils tried to burn him out. I praise you for giving him an overcoming spirit. I thank you for prayer warriors who lift him up. Lord, keep us faithful in praying for him, your servant, your son. And I just pray for his mama. I pray that he'll have rest unto his soul. I pray that you'll just keep giving him more insight that he can share with us and we can glorify your name together. Lord, we glorify you. We thank you for the plain text. We thank you for this coded text. We love you speaking to us in your dialect. Thank you for that and giving us the understanding through Sean's interpretations for us, man. That is so awesome. I can't wait to see you. 
Lord, we want to see you at the judgment seat of Christ being a hundredfolders, having given our all to you, living totally for you and zero for this world. Put that within us. Show every person who's listening to me right now what it means to them to get the world out. What they must sacrifice, what they must butcher, what they must slaughter, what they must kill in themselves. And to embrace everything about your word and to be living sacrifices for you. Show us what this means, Lord God. We are willing. We want to see you. We want to please you even now. We want to please you when we get there. To be able to throw all the crowns at your feet for your glory and honor. For being such a good friend to us, we desire to be a good friend back. Help us with that. Teach us what that means, Holy Spirit, I pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Guys, I love you, man. I love you, man. I'll see you on the other side, and we're going to high five, boom, and we'll never have another bad day again. I love you. I'm praying for you. Peace.